Now to the GMA cover story and the new research about a key conversation working couples should have that can help them balance their careers and relationships. It's all part of a new book called Couples That Work and Juju Chang is here with that. Hey Juju. Good morning Michael. You know if you were to boil down decades of research on couples it would boil down to this. What do you want? What do I want? Let's work this out together. That's the marriage contract. Of course, it's not that simple, and it's not just one conversation. It's one that you have over and over and over again. Okay, I got four minutes to get Roscoe to the vet, so I love you kids. Get out, get out, get out, get out. They're the tiny day-to-day -day struggles and the huge life decisions all working couples face. They're suggesting that they will replace the present dean with me. That's in Philadelphia, Texas is where I work. But I feel like this is this is an opportunity of a lifetime. Michael and Victoria both enjoy hard charging careers, but after welcoming a son, they had to make it work. In what ways did the baby change the formula? I think it made it like just no longer possible yeah, to function the way we were functioning. Something and had to give. Both shifted their priorities. Victoria, a psychiatrist, saw fewer patients at night. Michael left a corporate job to start his own financial company. I've actually changed my career entirely, and the primary reason of doing that is so I can spend more time with my family. What success looks like for me is to be able to walk the baby to school. You know, I've become less flexible in terms of my availability, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. It took some adjustment, but what I've realized is it does make me just more focused because I know this is this is the time I have. Jennifer Petri Gieri, author of Couples That Work, is sharing her new research based on conversations with over a hundred working couples who've balanced career and relationships over a lifetime. And so you could choose either to have one career be a primary career or co-equal careers. Really any arrangement can work. So even if your career is, say, more important than mine, we prioritize it, do I still get the chance to go after the things I want to go for? Do I still get the chance to pursue my dreams? And if the answer is yes, then couples do pretty well. And yet there's also the idea of a primary parent, right? The, a parent who takes the lead on doctor's appointments, soccer schedules, carpooling. It tends to fall onto the female. For couples who are really committed to pure co-parenting, they divide and conquer. So you take care of all the school stuff and the friends, and I'm in charge of the holidays and healthcare, for example. One study shows couples have more sex and more satisfying relationships when they both do the chores. But Petra Gieri says it's most important to define what couples want through couples contracting, where they outline shared values, boundaries, and fears. And what I found are the conversations that are really important are really about the principles of our relationship. What is it that really matters to us most? What vision do we have, if you like, for our relationship? What are the lines we're not going to cross as a couple? And what are some of the things we're worried about happening? Michael and Victoria say it's all about communication. What does your day look like today? Every morning we have a stand-up that we just sort of meet. What time are you coming home from work? What time am I coming home from work? What's on the docket? What has to get done? We divide up the the tasks that have to get done. So you've put life goals right up there with career goals. That's exactly right. And I think that in this weird way, professionally, I'm better off for it. Now, the author breaks down three stages of marriage. Michael and Victoria are clearly in the first stage, the how to make it work stage. But mid-career, couples encounter what they call the what we really want stage. It's a little existential. You change companies, you change careers, which means readjusting. And finally, there's the third stage, the who are we now stage. And that's like empty nesters, early retirees, and you're constantly redefining who you are as individuals and as a couple. Life always changes. So in all your conversations with Jennifer, is there one key to a successful marriage? She says it's about balancing power within that couple. And it could be anything from like housework, for example. Mm -hmm. And who's going to do the lion's share of the housework? The key to marital bliss is actually housework. But ask for help. Get the grandparents involved to help babysitting. Ask a friend for favors. Maybe subcontract out the housekeeping. Either that or just say yes, dear, to everything. You're there asking. you go. That's there you the go, key Juju. to marital bless right there. We all got it, all right? And Couples at Work is out today, and you can read an excerpt on our website, goodmorningamerica.com. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.